Welcome friends, my name is Alchemy. I'm going to be covering a Bitwig ultimate wish list of all the things that I could think of that could be improved, at least as of now, within the Bitwig workflow. Now, before I go any further, like I'm pretty happy with this already, and this is an amazing program. You can do some incredible stuff with this that you can't really do or can't do as well in other DAWs. And to kind of catch you up on why Bitwig is so great, talk about some quick features for one, Everything has modulators built into it, so you can essentially add modulators to anything that is attached to a CC, which makes this just insane as a sound design tool. The other thing, which is equally as important, is that it really caters towards a sound designer's particularly resampling workflow. So anything that I have, I can pretty much just click this and go bounce in place or bounce a new track, and then they have amazing audio processing stuff, clips within clips, operators, all that stuff. Bitwig's audio editing is great. Yes, something like Reaper can do some of the functions, but they can't do it as well. So there's that argument, blah, blah, blah. I think that right now, if you are a sound designer or you are into experimental music, this is this, this thing is the best that you can get into. I will say, however, that there are some improvements that I think can be made, and I'm gonna kinda just go over those. And for you guys, this is really just like a community powwow video. It's not really me trying to dump on Billig by any of the means of the sort. It's kinda just a talking head video of like, hey, this is a cool thing that I think that, you know, everybody can benefit from. Subscribe to the channel. Multi-stage envelope generator. What is an MSEG? An MSEG is something that can allow multiple curves. It's something that was very popularized within the means of, well, shoot, even Massive, but Serum in particular. I'm gonna pull up Vital because I don't think that I actually have Serum installed, but pretty much a multi-stage envelope generator is something that you can use to draw multiple things in like this, and then whenever you click a button over time, it will activate. This is a pretty slow trigger, but if you set this to be a little bit quicker, then theoretically, whenever this is activated towards something, let's set it in reverse, you'll see that it will travel along those lines. Now, technically speaking, we do have one. It's called four stage, but it's minimal at best. And the workflow aspect of it is very confusing because it's based off of these values here to where it's like, okay, what time mode am I working in? Where it says quarter notes, but then you have to think of like, all right, now this is, two quarter notes, so that's actually one half? Or is it one over one? Two quarter notes is one half, yeah. So in any case, it's a doable. It's just kind of strange uh, that this was the layout that was worked like that. And then you only have four stages to where you can do curves and nothing is left for interpretation in between. Now I will say that there is a work around this. So if you attach this to something here, say like that, and then we hit the button, it'll do the thing. But if you attach a bunch of these together or other LFOs or something and you start modulating different parameters like this, I'm just going to keep it relatively basic, but you can see that it'll start to create something that's a little bit more complex. Now, you can use this by any means for like random stuff and whatever, but for people that want to have like full on control over that, that's why multi-stage envelope generator is probably the biggest thing in particular. So that's actually not the biggest on my wish list though. That's probably just the number one requested thing. What I would like to talk about is something a little bit different and we're gonna start with distortion because I do think and hope that the next piece that they revisit with like the plus effects that they've been releasing lately starts with the distortion. So we've got this one. We've also got amp, which I'll pull this up as well just so that way you have a visual. And then let me see, what else do we have? I think that's it. Oh, we've got bit eight, which has a really cool clipper built into it. I don't know why it's attached to the bit crusher. That's, I don't know, but that's really cool. And then let me see if there's anything else that's just like destruction. Saturator, which is great. And then distortion, so four plugins. Now these are all great. And I think that all of them have a use case. If it were me personally, I would put the clip on the saturator could be a bit with, or sorry, could be an Ableton thing, but it just makes sense. Clipping, saturator, right? I don't know. Anyways, um, I do like all of these and I actually think that these are amazing once you get used to them. But something that you may not have known about is there are actually more distortion units that are hidden within the effects grid. And this kind of brings up the elephant in the room behind all of these that I would like to see because with these shapers, you've got all of these Shabby Chev, Distortion, Hard Clip, Quantizer, Rectifier, Saturator, Wave Folder, and Curve. 
only available within the grid. And there's a lot of things in particular, like all pass filters, for example, that are also only available in the grid. And I love the grid. I think it's great. And I think that this is amazing for some people, but for this particular kind of workflow, which is how I usually, or how I learned to sound design rather in Ableton, I think that just maybe combining all of these or most of them and being able to right click and like shift into the different one or do the same thing to where you have those different types via the chorus plus and phaser plus and whatnot kind of like so how you can just toggle between these of like i want this one i want this one i want this one like why not implement that you can also do that with the filters as well there's all of these like analog style filters that are available within the grid and you've even got these like pre and post drive and i'm not sure let me take a look at this i'm not sure what kind of drive it is it's just gain, which is still a distortion, but it's just regular gain. But imagine being able to apply that to your filters or being able to right click and be like, oh, I want this to be, you know, uh, like that new Moog filter that just came out with that. Those are the kinds of things that I think Bitwig in general could really benefit from. And speaking of that whole outlook of things, I really would like to see Bitwig, this is a hot take, but I would really like to see Bitwig take a more semi-modular approach. Here's a quick example. Unfortunately, you can only view one list of effects at a time per device. So if I have two of these lanes here, and let's say there's something in this, that's fine, something in this, something in this, something in this, this is only available if I click on it and it becomes a lot more difficult to add modulators to. So I can only view one of these at a time. And that's kind of one of the things that was actually really good about Ableton at the time because no other plugin or sorry, no other workstation could even do this. But now that we've kind of evolved into that, I think that even at least being able to heighten the device menu and preferably if possible, I would love you to be able to be the, or I'd love for you to have the ability to kind of have like a snap heap approach to where things become vertical and you can kind of draw in or if the device menu became something of a grid outlook in general to where you've got some kind of matrix and you can just click on your plugins here, have your list of favorites or whatever, use the browser and just be like, boom, 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 boom. Imagine how fast that would be as far as having a workflow. I think that would absolutely change the game with using or making the sound design approach from the horizontal standpoint, like so much more efficient. I don't know if that made sense or not, but hopefully it does. And if that is too much to ask, then I would say, all right, well, if we can't do that, then maybe we can start with making Polymer semi-modular and being able to alternate this in between having different snaps. I think Polarity, yeah, I watched his video, and Polarity has a very similar video about this, about where we think that this is already going. But imagine if you could have multiple filters, if you can add a distortion type unit, which I reviewed over the 4.3 beta, or being able to change out the sub into something different that can still do FM, something of the sort. This would be the first step, I believe. And speaking of, I think that the devices themselves, like having this mindset of combining a lot of things could benefit incredibly well. For example, the wavetable is only available, kind of like from we talked about before, either within Polymer or within the grid itself. And so what if we took something like FM4, phase four, any of those perhaps, and we added a wavetable instead of the mod. And it kind of just makes sense to me in that sense, in that way. And maybe, you know, you have to redesign the user interface and I'm not trying to make the devs bend backwards by any means, but these are all just creative suggestions that I think would totally rock or totally benefit. And if they have no intent on fixing uh, this or taking any of the ideas, I would still maybe at least like the ability to modulate this table here because unfortunately you can't. And so by having the ability to like transform the FM and stuff, even though this only works basically like off of sine waves, you could get some really interesting things from that and it would make this way more viable as a program in general. So. The other thing, I'm going to kind of try to stick with the devices and stuff, and then the most important stuff that I actually want to talk about is toward, probably going to be towards the middle of the video because that's like more audio stuff. This all, this stuff is fine. It's just like, you know, hey, here's some creative things that you might want to consider. But the next piece that I have is the effects 2 
and three. This is an amazing tool. And I love this thing. And I use this thing religiously, especially with the Aegis pack that I have out on my website for doing neurobase frequency splitting, generative things, X, Y, Z. But I think that if you had the ability to add lanes here, that would make this way more viable. And that's like, I don't know, maybe at least five. If I, if I had five, that would be really awesome. You can technically do like effects splitting within effect splitting, but you have to like be mindful of the crossover and all that other stuff and it can become kind of convoluted. The other thing that you can do with this that kind of like defeats the purpose of this is to do like an EQ and then I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. This is like the old school way that we, us like neuroheads used to do this, but you would go like this and then you would create another chain. I'm just gonna do a high and low cause I don't want to waste your time, but you would go from there to a high cut and now you've got your low. Speaking of, why do I have to hit enter to rename that? That's just mildly inconvenient, but low and high. So boom, and then the other one should be, let me see here, open that up. Oh, we have to copy that. You get the point. Open that up and then flip that. And so from this and, and being able to do it this way, like it's definitely great that that's the op that there's an option. I also really appreciate that there is a dedicated mix knob to that. However, within this environment, that's meant to solve that problem that I just created along with hopefully fixing the phase issues because you always have like crossover with that to where like the frequency overlaps just a bit. It's not really that big of an issue if you cross somewhere in your middles and once you get higher up, it's not that big of a deal. But having more lanes, again, just thinking about the kilohertz workflow, the snap heap workflow, I think could actually benefit this incredibly well. People ask me all the time, they're like, well, can't Bitwig do what kilohertz can and can't kilohertz do a lot of stuff that Bitwig can? And it's like reasons like this that I'm like, no, you, you need both. Well, at least for me, I need both. So let's see what we have next. Uh, I've already talked about adding modules to the grid as standalone devices featuring like the distortion types and stuff. Um, one thing that I think is kind of interesting is replacing the macros just with macro modulators. And the reason why is because mapping this can sometimes be cumbersome and sometimes you can't map what you want to do. And I don't think that you can actually map a modulator. So if I were to set this here, you might be able to, but I remember running into some kind of issue with this where I was trying to set a macro on something and it would not let me do that. And then, yeah, you can't map a macro to a modulator, but I think that you can modulate a macro Wait, um, you can modulate a macro, but you can't macro a modulator. So that seems a little bit different, or like kind of strange to me because this viewpoint is always on the right if you have both of them up at the same time. So either that or like you could also do a really easy fix to where you could just bring the modulators over on the left side and then have your macros. I don't really know, but that's kind of an odd thing to me that I think perhaps was overlooked. Uh, also bring back the rainbow knobs. Like I don't, I think that, you know, maybe it was just a cool test or whatever, but I love that. Um, it has nothing to do with, you know, being trendy or anything of the times, but something that I love about Bitwig is that it's so colorful already. Yes. Skins, uh, more colors, blah, blah, blah. Let's just get, okay. Yeah, whatever. But, that was actually really inspiring to me, especially when you think of the idea about attaching certain colors to frequency. There's this theory called synesthesia. I don't have it, but even still, I do like the idea about just more colors. It makes it more interesting. This is like a playground for me, and the more that it seems and is enticing to be like, hey, come and play, the more time I want to spend with it. So there's that. All right, uh, more operators, more MIDI functionality. I'm not quite sure what... I would like to them to add yet, but something in the future that I would like to be expanded upon is these guys, because they're so cool. <laughs> these guys are so freaking amazing. And if you don't use operators, like you really owe it to yourself to learn the ins and outs. You can do multiple repeats. We call them exponential rhythms. You can add chance to whether or not a note plays. 
You can also add like velocity curves towards your repeats, and then you've got recurrences about when this will play or when it won't. So I think that generative sequencing is probably the way to go. I've been looking at the poly and play and also the poly and tracker for those same amounts about adding hits and bits of randomness to this aspect. And the crazy thing is, is that this actually includes a lot of that as well. Say if I wanted, excuse me, to like change the velocity of all these at random, I can just turn this on and then go chaos, maybe turn the scale down a bit and then go chaos. But you'll see that all of these are moving in general. So now that I do that, you'll see that these are like way different. And there's all these changes that you can do that really play into the part with like just making really cool MIDI stuff, especially when you attach this to drums or things that are in key. I think that most people would say that they would want the MIDI editor to have like scales and stuff, but honestly, like just Google it. <laughs> like if you, need, if you need a scale to write a melody, like just Google it, man. Um, don't buy the medicine cord pack. Okay, I had to say that, but yeah, just just Google it. It's so much easier to do things in that way. But I will say that if you have stuff that, uh, say like reversing or doing more intricate things of like inversing these and whatnot, I think that you actually can reverse these. But I don't think that these have different means of yeah. So you can reverse, you can reverse the pattern. Um, there's different things that you can do within this that I think can be improved upon. Um, anything of that sort or like add a fifth or something of that would be really cool. It's not that big of a deal, but I think that, uh, I was so impressed when Bitwig 4 came out with the operators and I didn't even understand what they were at first. But now that I do, this is like break tweaker from Isotope, but on your MIDI roll. And it immediately makes everything just so much more expressive for generative music, for glitch music, for, you know, adding MPE stuff on top of that. It's amazing. Which goes into another point that I would like to see that I do not like within these editors is that you have to quantize in order to humanize this. Sort of. They recently came out with these effects that you can use, which are the humanize and quantize respectively, which are great devices. So... If you're like also like new to Bitwig, then this is probably a good learning course as well. But you've got Humanize, which will do as described. Maybe I spelled that incorrectly. Oh no, I didn't. But yeah, you've got Humanize and then you've also got Quantize, which are great effects. But I would like to actually see these integrated instead of them being on here to actually be in the piano roll or have both available because just like how you can on the arpeggiator, if we go here, this is one of the most important features that I do with my music right now, which is turning on the humanize function. This, I feel like this should be available in this. And that would just make my life so much easier, especially if it's playing like off time and then you could seed it theoretically. That would be awesome. So take that for what it is. We are in the idea of MIDI stuff. So the next piece that I have to this is a very simple one, but it would just be MIDI comping. It's great that we can do that with audio, so you can record takes, and then you can select all of those takes. So if you've got something, I'm just gonna do like a loop, see if we can pull something like that in there. And then we can go fold to takes, and then let's just make like four takes so that way we can understand what we're doing. Long story short, within the takes like this, if you go to this, clips, clip, and you go to comping, you can see that there's four different takes and really what you do is you work in a linear fashion of where you select what it is that you want from this. And so once you do that, you kind of like Frankenstein all of your takes together and then it plays as a single clip and then you can bounce it or do further processing to it or whatever. But this is an amazing workflow, especially if you do live recording and I absolutely love this, but uh, it's kind of odd that you can't do that with MIDI. I don't actually know if other DAWs have that. It's just something that I want in Bitwig because that's what I use. So the next piece of this is quantizing audio within a single function. So if I wanted to not slice this into takes, and let's say I have particular onsets here, I can't quantize them. If you do that, it does nothing. So there is a workaround, and what you do is you go like this. You go right-click and slice at onsets, or you go slice in place, 
and then you go on sets and now you can see that these are there then what you do is you highlight all of these and you go quantize and now this will move them over in a special way that you can kind of manipulate that further so it's not that big of a deal but i would like that streamlined or i would like that process to be streamlined and speaking of stuff over on this side one of the biggest ones that i would like to see kind of added is the ability to pitch this because working with this where is it the tempo on this as an audio event just is sometimes very cumbersome in that way um, you have to do a lot of like fiddling by hand and there's not really like an elegant way to do that and it's nice that it exists and i love that it will stretch the audio and also like change the idea of like it's stretching the sample out and the more that it stretches it out it messes with the pitch which is great but it's not that great to use and if you could like combine work like warp modes at the same time or have like a very fast process that's maybe non-destructive that's something that i would like to see added to audio editing as well um or at the very least something that would be cool is we this is our version of beats mode so you turn on the preview onset mode and then you only have the choice between little middle and big i would just like to have a slider maybe i think that would be the best place it doesn't need to be like ableton but having a slider from like really small to a really big value i think would be incredible if at all available so that's pretty much what i have for that um and speaking of this i think something else that could be kind of interesting is not everything but i would like the ability to actually modulate samples with modulators and so imagine if a world existed to where you can actually modulate the tempo of a sample of something like that and then you can record the output even if it's just tempo that would be amazing and you can technically automate the tempo over time but what's interesting is that the sample playback doesn't adjust in real time so if i'm playing this for example where you can hear whatever is going on and I adjust the tempo via repitch. That's new to me. They might have fixed that. Thank you, Bitwig. Uh, I remember that not working, and it could have been that I was working within a beta, but I learned something new, and I'm glad that it does that. So yeah, um, I don't know if that does that with the tempo though. Oh, it does, when did they add that? Amazing. Thanks, Bitwig. Scratch that one off. Okay. Slicing feature within Sampler. I have a fixer upper for you. If you are somebody that is used to working in Simpler via Ableton, then what you do is you come over here and you add yourself a sampler and you change it into granular mode. I need to load or delete all this stuff because this is like my super quote unquote super sampler or whatever, but Let's just pretend like all of these don't exist. And I'm just gonna delete them. Maybe, if I can select them. And there we go. So this is what a default sampler looks like. If you set this to texture mode and then you add a key tracking modulator here, then this is your next fix because what you do is you set this into freeze mode. You can also change the speed of this if you want to, but you set this to the playback position here. And then you set pretty much your range. So from this range to this range, this is actually the full thing. So if you want to kind of move that out or mellow that out in some way or another, then that's how you would do that. I actually like to use this mode because this provides a better like kind of spread between that. And it's actually cool because this will change how you select a slice. So for example, if I move this, you can see that the key range behind all of that becomes a little bit different. And so if I were to change this, assuming I can grab it, you can see that you can actually recreate like where you wanna place your slices. And I thought the way that this worked was actually via like if you shorten the sample or do something like that, it will distribute between that. I was actually incorrect about that. But with this instead, you can kind of pick 
where you want the keys to go. I wouldn't recommend that in particular, but if you want to kind of just do like a distribution via what I'm doing here, then you can actually find slices. I wouldn't say that it's the best for drums, but for finding like cool stuff like either glitches or anything that you use granular for or neuro-based chops or whatever, this is amazing for that in particular. And what's also cool is that you have the choice to either turn this off or turn it on. So that way, not only do you have the key tracking for the sample, but you can also preserve the pitch that will move over at a specific time. That being said, it would still be nice to have to not have to have that little hack. Uh, being able to be like, you know, dedicate slices here. It's fine if the sampler needs to be bigger, but you know, by all means, um, since we're talking about the sampler, that's really the only thing that I would want to be fixed. The other like quote unquote like wish list that I think would be sick is just adding the release to more devices. Because what happens whenever you use the release is that if you have something that is triggered by MIDI within it, say like a synth or another sampler, then once you release the button, it'll trigger MIDI into that. And you can set what MIDI note it is, you can set the length, you can put an arpeggiator in it, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with that. That makes it really fun to create call and responses, which I think is one of the most difficult aspects of writing good music. So if you, you know, abuse that, then you can do all types of things. And if you have more releases, you can create full on musical conversations that go beyond a simple call and response that you should definitely try to get into. So the other stuff that we have here are a little bit less like uh, how would I say like they're not the most important thing, but I do think that they could be beneficial. For example, one thing that I really like about the project folder is that if you go into sections here, then you've got main section 1A and it will show you where your cue markers are. What I would love is if you selected this, it would select all the tracks within that and then you could move them from place to place, including the automation, including all of that. That would, that would be so cool if you could do that. I don't know if that's even possible or whatever, but you're pretty much like changing your composition into blocks. And I would say that like the selection aspect of this can sometimes be finicky anyways. It's gotten a lot better, but when I first used Bitwig, it was kind of, mm. but being able to just be like, oh, here's main section, sorry, here it is. Here's main section one. Now I'm going to move it after another section here, of course, but I can move it after main section two, or I can place it right next to each other. Or maybe there's a timeline of like bars right here on the bottom, so that way you can do it in a non-linear sense. Whew, now I'm spitting fire, but that would be absolutely insane. Um, next up we have colors and themes. I've already talked about that. I, I hope it comes at some point. I do love the black layout, and I love that they've added the ability to change this, but I think what most people want are a couple of things. The first one is changing the background of the timeline. The second thing is that some people would really like the ability to have the waveform or the clip be transparent so you can still see the grid. It's not that big of a deal to me because everything adjacent to this kind of shows what that is. And a lot of times I don't really worry about waveforms in the middle. I worry more about like at the beginning. So if I were to try to align this, like it's already there. So it's not that big of a deal to me. Even for me, I work in audio a lot but I could understand why somebody might want that in general. Um, let's see, uh, modulating stuff within the sampler would be really cool. So you can't modulate any of this stuff. You can do it via here, but you can't like change between the loop selection mode. And you also can't change between uh, this stuff or change or toggle the reverse, I believe. And I guess you could do it with the speed, but it would be nice if I could at least kind of change that. Um, speaking of things that you can't modulate, the Convolver, while I do absolutely love this device, I said it when I reviewed this, I know that this is going to be a long video, but I do think it's going to be a good one because we're talking about some really cool stuff here. You can't modulate the tune, which is used for stage. And I know that this requires a lot of processing power, but if you had the ability to do that, I think that would be pretty amazing. I've already talked about combining FM and the synth table. I think a wavetable maker would be amazing. I know that it's really accessible to get uh, Vitals Free, so you could just use that. I get that. But when people are looking at you know feature sets of these things, if you have a wavetable maker, that's just that more enticing to stop using this and to focus on what's in the DAW because integration is key. Why 
does Bitwig work so well? Why did I choose Bitwig? Well, that's because everything that works within its ecosystem and how friendly it is to the VSTs already are amazing, but the stronger that it is in-house, the more that I wanna use stuff like that. Why do I say that I have to own kilohertz? Well, because the ecosystem and the workflow of how it is is better than anything else. You just can't really, you could argue with it, but I'd be inclined to disagree with you. Uh, those things are just awesome. So grouping modules within the grid would be amazing. Saving presets or saving a default for your modulators would be great. So I don't like that I have to like, if I have a random, which is the thing that I use more than anything else, something like this, and uh, I turn this on, I have to like readjust this every time, change the trigger mode. It's just more time that I'm wasting as opposed to being like, right click, save as default. That would be nice. Even if I can just do that, that would be amazing. Um, yeah, adding release to the other devices, modulate convolver and pitch, colors, grouping modules in the grid would be amazing. So if uh, you wanted to save like kind of micro presets or micro setups, I guess, I don't really have a better way to explain that. But if you've got a bunch of stuff here, let's just, I'm just going to drag in anything and being able to say, okay, well, I've already made a compressor. That's totally a compressor, by the way, <laughs> but being able to do this and then group that that would be really cool to do. I think that the grid people would love that because that way, instead of being like, well, I have to create not only a preset, but I have to also create the stuff within a preset or I have to load a new preset and then build around that. It's kind of cumbersome for that workflow in general. An additive engine would be cool because you don't really have that. Uh, or a spectral engine, I guess would be kind of cool, but it's not really that big of a deal. Um, I mentioned this earlier of like having to rename stuff or having to hit enter to rename something that is probably one of my biggest pet peeves about this so if i want to go like java i have to hit enter in order to do this because if i click off of this as you'll see here it will not rename that and also when i rename a clip java I would like this to rename within the file section as well. And I guess there might be something like inherent or fundamental with that of why you can't because it becomes a unique clip, but I would almost rather it become a unique clip already as opposed to me having to bounce it just to get the name different. Because the more time, like why would I name this something different in here if it's not gonna name it in the sample thing, especially if you're making sample packs. It's fine, but it's you know not one of those things. Um, so I've only got one more and that is force duplication. And so if you are trying to duplicate a bunch of MIDI notes here within a clip, so you go into the track view here. If you do this, you get this error and I get why it exists, but I would almost rather them just like either maybe like set a behavioral thing and let you push it or, you know, duplicate it within the container itself and then just shorten the container. I don't really know what the right answer is for that, but that's something that drives me crazy pretty often of just like having just a little bit too much selected like that and then being like duplicate i if you could recognize like hey there's no mini there or something that would be great um i like that you can select everything and like overwrite that that's actually a workflow that i've adopted but at the same time it's just kind of like uh, all right so i'm double checking on everything and making sure that i didn't miss anything I think that's all the stuff that I would really like for Bitwig to become the ultra instinct image of itself. Maybe, I don't know, make a controller or something. That would be really cool or some kind of integrative thing. I would buy it, I would review it and I would use it religiously. And other than that, like this thing is as close to as perfect as you can possibly get. I love this thing. Oh, one thing that I do need to explain is that typically in the past, if you're using a Mac and you're using an audio output, I brought this up to Bitwig. They said that they would look into it, but it's not Bitwig's fault, actually. It's Black Hole's fault. Something with that, rather. I don't really want to say somebody did something wrong, but I had to buy loopback or something like loopback because of the audio routing. So typically within Black Hole, when I used to, oh, I still have it, within Black Hole, if you set your recording or like your output to a multi-output device, you will not be able to record in this, even though you can do that within Ableton. So the workaround that I found is within using something like loopback to where I can now both record into my DAW, I can also get computer into my sound without it going absolutely insane. 
and that's awesome. And if I had to nitpick about one last thing about that that I just remembered, it would be that if I'm getting ready to record for a track and I set my end to be what it's supposed to be, I've tried turning this off. Don't, Don't turn this on automatically because this has created more feedback in my speakers that I thought I was going to explode. Just let me keep it off. That would be really nice. Um, please add a behavioral thing. Other than that, I got nothing else. Let me know in the comment section what you guys are thinking of and what you would like to see if I haven't mentioned it. I'm going to say this now. I should have said at the beginning of the video, but watch the video first before you comment. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching my content. Pretty soon, I think that we will be looking at doing an interesting giveaway for one of these guys. Rest in peace, Sensel. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for sending me one of these. Um, nothing but good things to say about you. Everyone should own one. It's only a shame that you can no longer get your hands on one. That being said, I want this to go to a good home to somebody that's going to use it a lot. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.